And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed verses in the Quran that are so powerful that we would be protected from the devil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed a verse. It is verse number 255 of Surah Al-Baqarah. That is known as Ayatul Kursi. It mentions the greatness of Allah, the fact that He is in absolute control. He is the protector. He is the one who protects every single one. He has knowledge of absolutely everything. So this verse, we are taught that if we were to repeat it, we would be protected from shaitan. There is a narration making mention of Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu, wherein he had actually caught the devil on one occasion. And what happened is the devil then taught him something. The third time that this happened, which means when he caught the devil the third time, the devil says, I will teach you something that will protect you from myself and my progeny or the rest of the shayateen. And so he taught him Ayatul Kursi. So Abu Huraira released him. He went to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asking him or telling him what had happened. And Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, he has told you the truth on this occasion. But remember, he's a liar. Why is Ayatul Kursi so important? What is so blessed about Ayatul Kursi? Of them is the hadith of Ubayy ibn Ka'ab that once the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went to him, O oh Ubayy, which ayah in the Quran is the most blessed ayah? It is the greatest ayah. So Ubay did not want to respond out of modesty. So he said, Allah and His Messenger know best. So the Prophet insisted, O oh Ubay, what is the greatest ayah in the Quran? So he said, Allah la ilaha illa huwa al hayyu al qayyum. La ta'khuduhu sinatun wa la nawm. Lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al awm. Man dha alladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi idhnih. Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum. Wa la yuhiituna bi shay'in min ilmihi illa bi ma shah. When Ubay said this, the Prophet ﷺ, he pushed him gently and he said, Knowledge will always be happy around you. May you be congratulated for your knowledge. So this shows us that the Prophet ﷺ agreed with Ubay ibn Ka'b that indeed the greatest ayah in the entire Quran is Ayatul Kursi. A'zamu ayatin fi kitab Allahi Azza wa Jal. Ayatul Kursi is to be recited every night. We learn also the Prophet ﷺ said, Sunan al-Nisa, he said, that uh, Ayatul Kursi should be recited in the morning and the evening. And in one other hadith reported in Muslim Imam Ahmad, that it is also authentic. Our Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever recites Ayatul Kursi after every single Fard Salah, and if you make this a habit and a routine, what did our Prophet Sallallahu say? Nothing will prevent a person from entering Jannah except his own death. Meaning, you are a person of Jannah if you recite Ayatul Kursi after every of the five salawat. Now, why? What is so special about this Ayatul Kursi? It is but one ayah. It is one third of a page. And there are so many other verses of the Quran. The Quran has over 6,000 something verses. Why does this verse stand out so much? The response is very simple. It is because the verse deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His names and attributes. And always the most majestic verses and the most blessed verses in the Quran are the verses that talk about Allah Azza wa Jal. Why? Because nothing 
is more grandiose to discuss, more majestic to discuss, more beautiful to discuss than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no topic that is more worthy of being talked about and praised other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the best verses in the Quran are those verses that praise Allah. Allah says, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum. Allah, and this is as we know, the primary name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no name in the Quran that is more common than this name, and that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a name that occurs over 3,500 times. It is a name that Allah has mentioned and revealed in all of the books to this day. The Old and New Testament are full of the references of Eloh and Elohim. And this is Allah and Allahum. That Allah is the one, this is the meaning, the one who is worthy of being venerated and worshipped. This is what Allah means. Therefore Allah affirms this by saying, Allahu la ilaha illahu. There is no deity worthy of worship other than Allah. And if you look around you, mankind always submits to beings other than Allah except for the true Muslim. Some people submit to false gods, others submit to their desires, others submit to materialism and money and they worship money. He is Al-Hay Al-Qayyum. Al-Hay, the one who has perfect life. Because not only does he have life, he has perfect life and he gives life. And then once we are alive, we need food, we need water, we need rest, we need sleep. And every life is followed by death except for Al-Hay. Al-Hay does not need anything. Al-Qayyum means the one who gives others all that they need. So Al-Hay goes back to Allah. Al-Qayyum goes back to the creation. Al-Hay can take care of himself. Al-Qayyum takes care of everything else. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم. We explained this is the perfection. If Allah Azza wa Jal does not even get tired, he does not even get sleepy, then he doesn't need food. He doesn't need anything. له ما في السماوات وما في الأرض. Every other being besides him belongs to him. Complete ownership. Nothing happens in this world except that Allah has willed it, except that Allah knows about it, except that Allah has created it. The entire creation is in the heavens and earth, they belong to Allah Azza wa Jal. Man dhalladhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi'idhni. It's a rhetorical question that is meant to indicate his ultimate power. Who can possibly even intercede? Allah is saying, you cannot even ask shafa'a, much less actually do something. Except if Allah allows it. Allah knows what is in front of them and behind them. Allah knows what is in front of them, meaning what will happen to them in the future, meaning the akhirah. And what is behind them, meaning what they have done that everybody else thinks is hidden. Allah knows what's going to happen tomorrow. Allah knows what's going to happen in the next life. Allah knows what you did in hidden and secret. Allah knows when nobody was looking, when everybody thought that you're all alone. Allah knows what happened. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ They have nothing of Allah's knowledge except if Allah tells them وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His kursi and we don't know much about this other than the kursi is one of the largest and the most magnificent creations of Allah Azza wa Jal and Allah says His kursi encompasses all of this that you know around you what we think is the world, his kursi is larger than that. وَلَا يَؤُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا That he never becomes tired of taking care of the entire creation. Every single being is taken care of. The air that you breathe, the water that I drink, Allah has destined it for you. Allah knows it. Every day Allah Azza wa is taking care of every being. All of these billions of beasts and creatures, Allah says, even that which crawls in the land, that which swims in the ocean, there is nothing except that Allah is giving its sustenance to it. And these are two of the majestic names of Allah, the comprehensive names of Allah. They are broad meanings. They encompass many meanings. Al-Ali means the exalted. So Allah Azza wa Jal is exalted in His essence. He is above us. He is exalted in His might. He is exalted in His knowledge. Al-Ali, there is nothing greater than Allah. Al-Azim again means the majestic and the great. Al-Azim, there is 
is nothing that is greater than Allah Azza wa Jal. This one verse has more than 20 of Allah's names and attributes. And in fact, the whole verse from beginning to end is nothing other than the names and attributes of Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. It is because of this that this verse is the greatest verse in the Quran. Ayatul Kursi is made up of nine sentences. The first sentence is Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum. It's a beautiful sentence which ends with two of Allah's names. Al-hayy al-qayyum. The living and the source of all establishment. Everything stands and exists and is maintained because of Allah. What's incredible is that the last sentence, sentence number one, has something in common with sentence number nine, which is wa huwa al-aliyyul azim. How many names of Allah in the, in the last sentence? Two names of Allah in the first sentence, two names of Allah in the last sentence. Okay. What's the second sentence? لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Drowsiness. Drowsiness happens when you're tired. Your eyes start kind of closing a little bit. You're not sleeping, but you're kind of half sleeping like that guy over there. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. <laughs> the second sentence is, these are things that creation has. Creation gets tired and it starts getting drowsy and eventually it falls to sleep. What was the second last sentence? وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا Guarding the skies and the earth does not exhaust Allah. The second sentence is actually connected to the second last sentence. لَا تَأْخُذُهُ سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ وَلَا يَعُودُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا He says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ he owns whatever is in the sky and the earth. Now before I tell you further, you need to understand the difference between two words, two names of Allah. Malik and Malik. Malik is an owner. Malik, king. Is there a difference between a king and an owner? Yes. You are the owner of your pen. But you do not say, I am the royal sovereign of this ink pen. <laughs> you don't do that. That doesn't make a lot of sense. You understand? Kingdom is about controlling people. Ownership is about controlling objects. There's a difference. Now Allah says, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ He owns whatever is in the skies and the earth. What is the ayah about? Ownership. So every single thing is owned by Allah. Okay. What's the third last sentence? Anyone remember? وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ His throne extends to the skies and the earth. When Allah talks about His throne, He's talking about His kingdom. One dimension of control is ownership. The other dimension is kingdom. Both completing the picture. Allah is Malik and He is Malik. The Malik part of Allah's attribute, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ Third sentence, The king, kingdom of Allah, وَسِعَ كُرْسِيُّهُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ What's the fourth sentence? مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِهِ Let's understand this ayah first. Who will come and make shafa'a with Allah except unless He gives permission? Shafa'a means you got connections. On judgment day, we are in trouble possibly, and then somebody comes and says, no, 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 they're, they're, they're with me. They're with me. Go easy on them, please. We beg Allah Azza wa Jal to qualify us for the shafa'a of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah says, nobody will come for you. Your uncle, your cousin, your dad, your mom, your boss. You're not going to come for you on judgment day. <laughs> ya Allah, actually, he's... he's no, 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 not over there. There's no VIP ticket. Except, the only exception is if Allah gives permission. So this ayah is about nobody having any authority unless Allah gives it to them. The exception is if Allah gives it to them. You clear about that? Okay. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ they know nothing, they encircle nothing of his knowledge. Illa except Bimasha. The fourth sentence and the sixth sentence are both about a statement about Allah and the only exception. The statement was nobody has authority to make a case except 
whoever Allah gives permission. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاء The two, fourth and the sixth sentence are correlated. The first and the ninth, the second and the eighth, the third and the seventh, the fourth and the sixth, what's left? Okay. Middle sentence? Yes. He says, يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Oh my God, he says he knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them. As though, and he knew what is coming ahead in the ayah and what was yeah. behind in the ayah. He, and the, in the middle of it is, I know what's ahead and I know what's behind. Who speaks like that? Who speaks like that? SubhanAllah.